It's week 23 of the NHL season, and this week was a dramatic mess. We got coaches refusing to get ejected, the NHL trade deadline, and games having to end twice. It was a wild week for the league, so let's cover it all in this video. Sunday, pathetic Penguins. You know, I really thought my San Jose Sharks were going to go all the way this year, but as we close in on the playoffs, I am starting to have some doubts. Another 4-3 loss to the Wild, which saw Kirill the thrill Kaprizov net a hat-trick to help the Wild stay incredibly mid. Both Canadian teams in the Canucks and Jets caught a dub on Sunday as well, and that should give Gary Bevan some chest pains. But the real story of the day was the Devils and the Penguins. Both of these teams have been massive letdowns this season. The Devils have some more legitimate reasons, as they've been plagued with injuries and they can't get a damn save, and a 5-1 spanking from the LA Kings was another brutal outing that would be the final straw to Lindy Ruff's run in New Jersey. The Penguins, on the other hand, just look too damn old. We did a breakdown on them this week and why they've been so inconsistent this season. Make sure you check out that video after this one, but a 6-1 beatdown from the Oilers. And afterwards, the media asked Crosby about the bigger picture at the trade deadline, to which Sid responded that he had no clue what picture he was talking about and the GOAT is taking it one game at a time. Before we hop into Monday, I want to thank Vaporfresh for sponsoring today's video. Vaporfresh is a non-toxic plant-based spray that cleans and deodorizes equipment the right way. I live in a condo, so I give my equipment a quick little spray of Vaporfresh, and then I hang it up to dry. When it's time to play, my equipment is back to smelling fresh, and I'm ready to go. You can grab your bottle today for 10% off by clicking the link in our description. Monday, Rempamania. Matt Rempe had all of MSG chanting his name on Monday night as Rempamania continues to run wild in the NHL. Great story, hope he takes it all in strides and picks his battles like he does with Gajevic here. Rempe really said, Who the fuck is that guy? Every Panthers match is like a UFC hockey hybrid anyways, as there was a ton of physicality in this game, but the highlight of the night was this ridiculous play by Alex Barkov. He receives the pass, it bobbles up in the air, he taps it over the first ranger stick, controls it once it lands on the ice, and then feeds Reinhardt with a perfect pass. Easily the vapor fresh disgusting goal of the week. My goodness, go wash your hands you filthy animal. Panthers take this one 4-2. The dog Nathan McKinnon continues to feast on the Chicago Bedards with a 4 point night. 4 nothing victory and pure dominance from the MVP frontrunner as that performance ties him with Kucherov for the lead league in points. Nylander recorded a hat trick as well. No, not that $11 million Nylander. His brother, Alex Nylander, gets his first career hattie as the Jackets steamroll the defending cup champs 6-3. William Nylander and the rest of the Leafs had the pleasure of facing Boston. With this being a potential playoff preview, this game was a nice reminder that no matter how old, mature, and different this Leafs team is, the Boston Bruins still run their show. 4-1 loss, the parade is cancelled due to past leave trauma of 4-1 leads and the Boston scaries. Speaking of scary things related to Boston, Jordan Binnington looked like the 2019 version of himself with a ridiculous 40 save performance and win over the Flyers. Blues are chasing a wildcard spot and this was a must win for them to stay somewhat in the race. The night ended off with Martin Popisil absolutely destroying Adam Larson with a hit that made video game physics look real. Pospisil was all fired up from that hit, so he smoked Vince Dunn from behind, and that earned him an ejection. The Kraken and Grubauer were solid in this one, as they win 4-2 over the Flames. Tuesday, Barn Burner. Nine games on Tuesday, but the Barn Burner of the night belonged to the future cup champs in the Sharks and the Dallas Stars. Wyatt Johnson had his first career hat trick, and the Stars rallied from three goals down in the third period to beat the Sharks 7-6 on Rupe Hintz's OT goal. The 5'8 legend rookie Logan Stankoven got four points in this one, and he's been absolutely incredible to start his career. As for the Sharks, all they need to do is go a perfect 21-0 to squeak into the wildcard spot. I say they do it. The Preds have been scolding hot with an eight-game win streak, but sometimes your luck is bound to even out, as David Savard would score this absolute snipe from center ice. Tough bounce, but that's the way she goes sometimes. Habs captain Nick Suzuki rips a gross shot for his 100th career goal, and quietly, Suzuki has got 13 goals in his last 15 games. Not bad. 
McDavid and Dreisaitl remain a cheat code in 3-on-3 hockey, and they beat the Bruins in OT after Zach Hyman scored with 80 seconds left to tie the game. The Bruins may be merchants of the pity point, and I can't quite put a finger on exactly how good this team actually is, but I guess we'll just have to wait for the playoffs. Leonardo DeCousins put his acting career on the shelf this week and scored two to spoil Travis Green's coaching debut for the New Jersey Devils. The Devils are a disaster, and it's just hard to watch at this point. Malkin absolutely loves scoring on his own net this year, but luckily, he still likes scoring on the other team as well. He pots one in a 5-3 win over the Jackets, and Crosby's back finally gets a rest. The Islanders beat the Blues to win their fourth in a row, as they look like the best team to dethrone the Flyers out of that last playoff spot in the Metro. The Canucks and Kraken both win their second game in a row, and the Chicago Bedards snap a 22-game row losing streak. That is just sad, but somebody had to be the guy to take the fall, and of course, it was the Coyotes. Wednesday, the real trade deadline. Even though the trade deadline is on Friday, the NHL likes to do this thing where they just have it on some random day before, and the actual deadline day itself ends up being the most boring eight hours of your life. Wednesday was a wild day for trades. Tarasenko went to the Panthers, which is an absurd add to the best team in the league. Then the Oilers traded for center Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick to improve their depth up front. The Avalanche decided to one-up everyone by making two big trades. First, they dealt Ryan Johansson and a first for coveted defenseman Sean Walker and a fifth. On top of that, they traded defenseman Bowen Byram to Buffalo for center Casey Middlestadt. Then, just to piss everyone off at the end of the day, the Golden Knights traded for defenseman Noah Hannafin. The LTIR merchants are at it again, and fans are pissed that the Golden Knights get a top defenseman and likely Mark Stone back once he makes a miraculous recovery. It was an insane day of trades, but comment down below who you think had the best deal. As for the hockey, the Leafs and Sabres played the most uneventful 2-1 game you'll ever see in your life. Matthews pots the OT winner to get his 54th of the season. Speaking of boring 2-1 games, the Toilet Bowl qualification matchup saw the Ducks beat Ottawa 2-1. To end the night off, Kale McCarr pots his first career hat-trick against the Red Wings as the Avs win big with a 7-2 victory. It was a busy day for NHL news, but overall, the Avs had themselves a night. Thursday, Deja Blue. The Leafs are having severe deja vu after losing 4-1 to Boston for the second time this week. The PTSD runs deep for Leaf fans, and it will probably never go away. These two teams will likely meet in the first round of the NHL playoffs, and if it was anything like this game, it's going to be a wild series. Because we all know how this movie ends and the smackdown that the Bruins laid on the Leafs this week, that unfortunately means that the Leafs' cup parade is temporarily cancelled. Philip Forsberg and his perfect mustache recorded a hat trick against the Sabres, and the Preds get back in the win column. Feel good story of the week surrounded the Caps, as in this game versus the Penguins. Tom Wilson opened the scoring hours after his grandfather passed away. Emotional moment for him, and he scores a beauty in his honor. Then rookie Ivan Miroshnichenko scored his first NHL goal. After missing the 2022 season after he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, he was then drafted by the Caps after completing treatment and tonight he scores his first NHL goal. Amazing story for him as Ovi gives him some love on the bench and despite trading Kuznetsov and having an up and down season, the Caps are still lurking in this playoff race as they beat the Penguins 6-0. Speaking of the Carolina Hurricanes, they won the Jake Gensel sweepstakes as they pick up the highly coveted winger to load up for a deep run. Freddie Anderson made his return after missing time due to blood clots and he backstopped Carolina to a 4-1 win over the Habs. Keeping it in the Metro, a gutsy effort by the Flyers allowed them to narrowly beat Florida 2-1. I can't believe this team is in the position they are in at this point of the season, but the power of Torts is real, and they got a legit shot to make it despite prior expectations. The Devils' Timo Meyer finally has a monster game as his hat-trick helps the Devils snap a three-game losing streak and get their first win under new coach Travis Green. Finally, there was some justice in this world as the Canucks did the hockey world a favor by beating the Golden Knights 3-1. However, all that loss did is encourage Vegas to become the undisputed villain of the NHL. Friday. They can't keep getting away with this. If picking up Anthony Mantha and Noah Hannafin wasn't enough, the Golden Knights were able to also pick up center Thomas Hurdle from the Sharks. The defending cup champs are absolutely stacked, and if they get Mark Stone back in the playoffs, they are going to be a problem 
and NHL fans everywhere will implode with anger. With the actual deadline taking place on Friday, a lot of the big trades already went down, but there were some notable moves. The Jets picked up Tyler Toffoli, Lightning picked up Matt Dumba, Jason Zucker goes to the Preds, and Ocposo goes to the Panthers. There was a lot of depth moves for deadline day, but usually, the team that ends up winning it all has the move that no one talks about or even cares for. So, we will see how it all turns out in the end. With four games on on Friday, the Stars predictably beat up on the Ducks. The Avs got Nachushkin back from the player assistance program, and he got the OT winner to beat the Wild. The Jets continue to look solid by shutting out the Kraken, but the sneaky surprise was the Yotes shutting out the Red Wings. Ever since riding a real hot streak about a week and a half ago, all of a sudden, the Red Wings have lost four straight with some teams breathing down their neck. Saturday, overtime drama. Saturday was a packed night of hockey, but the drama started in the early game between the Sabres and the Oilers. Owen Power pots the game winner with two seconds left and says, let's go home. Sabres fans start to leave, players go to the dressing room, but hold the phone. The NHL reviews the play because it's the final minute of OT and they rule it offside. So we gotta do this all over again. Sabres come back out, the Oilers take their sweet time and they replay the final seconds of the OT which saw a solid save from Skinner in the dying seconds to force a shootout. But puck doesn't lie and the Sabres win twice with UPL making the stop and giving the good goal Selly to boot. John Tortorella kept the drama going on Saturday as he would get tossed from the game and he straight up said, I'm not fucking leaving! With Philly down 4-zip 10 minutes into the first, Torts was losing it after Garnet Hathaway received a 10-minute misconduct for shoving Anthony Sorelli. He gets the boot, makes a scene, and the Lightning stomp the Flyers 7-0 right after I praised them and Torts. Go figure. Tarasenko scores in his first game as a Panther, as Florida continues to roll over the league with a 5-1 win over the Flames. The Chicago Bedards are also officially eliminated from playoff contention with a 4-1 loss to the Caps. That, of course, means that there's still a chance for my Sharks, who beat the Sens 2-1 in the toilet bowl and hand them their 7th straight loss. The losing streak kept going for the Wings as they lost to NHL's public enemy number one in the Golden Knights, and that is five straight L's for Detroit. The Wings have completely lost their mojo right now, and they better get it together before they slip out of a playoff spot. The Canadian teams were also in the mix against each other, and it wouldn't feel like a hockey night in Canada without the Leafs versus Habs on a Saturday night. Toronto narrowly beat Montreal 3-2 thanks to a John Tavares goal, and to end the night, the Canucks are back to being a force. A 5-0 statement win over the Jets had coach Rick Bonus rip into his team in the media, saying that that was the worst game he's seen them play in the two years that he's been the coach. Big win for Vancouver, but the only worry is that goalie Thatcher Demko left this game early due to injury. So, who surprised you this week heading into the stretch run for the season? Who do you think is the real deal? Who do you think are frauds? Drop a comment down below. And if you want to see any of our breakdowns from this past week, subscribe to the channel and click on any of the links right here.